All right, welcome into the FNIA podcast with a couple of NFL legends. And Rodney Harrison, Tony Dungy, you guys know this league well, and you know that it all begins on draft day. So we're going to run through a mock draft here, the top 11 picks of the draft. I'll start it off with number one. I haven't really heard much pushback <laughs> on this. Caleb Williams, the safe pick. There he goes off to Chicago. I think it's the right pick to pick number two, the Commanders. Coach Dungy, how do you see it? Let's go, Coach. All right. Well, the Commanders, they're in the same position as the Chicago Bears. Hey, we need a quarterback. We didn't have a great team last year. Who do we have to pick from? Uh, Jack already took the top guy off the board. So now I'm looking at Jaden Daniels from LSU, Drake May from North Carolina. Some positives for each guy, some negatives for each guy. But Daniels has the experience. He's played a lot of football. He's been really productive in the big games. Drake May is kind of the up-and-comer, that newcomer, only a two-year starter, great athlete, talented. He's a little bit bigger, and maybe he's got the potential. Uh, but, man, it's a tough call. I happened to be at the University of North Carolina two weeks ago. I spoke at their coach's clinic, and I met Drake May, spent some time with him. And I hate to say it, but I fell in love with him, his personality and the way his teammates rallied around and the way everybody responded to him. Uh, so I'm a little bit biased here, and, and I really love this young man. But I think in the final analysis, I've got to go with that experience in the, the big games and go with Jaden Daniels. I think that's a good choice, Coach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and with the number three pick, the New England Patriots, and you talked about two young quarterbacks. But to me, this is not where the Patriots want to take Drake May or, uh, well, at least Drake May. I don't think he's a top three pick. This is an opportunity. You look at the guys, the talent that they have on that roster, not a whole bunch, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Demario Davis, Tyquan Thornton, um, Kayshawn Butte, they don't have a lot of talent. So I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm taking him with the third pick overall. We talk about him being a generational talent. He is the 2024 version of Randy Moss. Big, fast, can catch. He has no weaknesses, coach. And you coached his dad. You know how much of a pain in the butt his dad was at 5'10 around the league. Can you imagine this young man and the imprint that he can make on New England? And I just don't think Drake May is worthy of the third pick overall. I was thinking about this before we even came on. Peyton Manning was the number one pick. I think, do I think Drake May is two picks less than Peyton Manning? Absolutely not. And I know Peyton struggled as a rookie, but there's no way I'm taking Drake May at three. I think he's more probably of a second or third round guy. I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Rodney, I, I agree with you. And Bill Poland told me something when I worked with him in New England. You're only going to be picking in the top five very rarely. You can't afford to miss, and you better take special. You have a, a, an opportunity to get this. So you may need a quarterback. You may need something else. But don't take something you need and pass up something that's special. Mm -hmm. If you're in the top five, take special. So I'm, I'm with you all the way. I saw little Marvin was two years old when, when I got there, and he is uh, he's everything you want in a receiver. What's that family like, Coach? What are they getting in that family? You know that family very well. Uh, it is perseverance, it's dedication, it's hard work, and that's what he learned from his dad. Uh, I don't know where he got the size because he definitely <laughs> didn't get that from dad. But everything else about the, the way I'm going to attack my profession, I'm going to be the best I can be, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to – no fanfare, no no frills, none of that. I'm just going to go out there and work hard. And uh, whoever drafts this guy is going to love him as a teammate and as a, a person. Hey, Coach, I agree with you because I think he, this kid has the talent to be a future Hall of Famer. You talk about all, you know, all the measurables and, and what he does on a football field. There's not many corners that are professional right now that can guard this guy one on one. He is a difference maker. He, he's going to give defensive coordinators headaches trying to rotate defenses around him. And like I said, if the Patriots are trying to build a roster, you got to get good players. Kendrick Bourne is a solid player. Kayshawn Boutte, all these guys are average players. And then you bring in a young guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., he sets the tone, and maybe more guys would like to come and play with him. You, you, you just don't know. Roddy, what do they do at quarterback, talking about the Patriots? Well, you're probably going to have to find something in the later rounds or possibly even trade for a quarterback, but there's no way I'm spending the number three pick overall on Drake May. There's no way. 
I like it. All right, well, we have the first steal of the draft thing because I was thinking Marvin Harrison Jr. would still be hanging out by the time it got to the Arizona Cardinals, who are the fourth pick. So I'm going to have to make a little slight draft day adjustment here, which we know is a big part of this thing. And I'm going to go Joe Alt to mm. the Cardinals, who I had a little lower down on the chart. I was thinking maybe to Tennessee and the Titans, but a pick like Rodney just made can shift the whole board. And Joe Alt, ever since he was 18 years old, there has been some special stories about him just getting to the building, learning the offense like that, being the most athletic in that offensive line room at Notre Dame. His dad is, you know, an all-pro offensive lineman that coached him since he was a little kid. I think this is as safe a bet of a tackle as you are going to find in the NFL draft. In my opinion, he'll go on to be a Hall of Famer, and the Cardinals need it. They needed a receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. They need a tackle, too. There goes Joe Alt. I think they need players. And if I'm the Cardinals, I would have to. And I love Joe Alt. Absolutely 100%. But I'm almost coaching. Maybe you can speak to this. What about trading back? Because I know Minnesota and there are some other teams would love to take that four spot, Coach. That, and that's what's going to happen. If your pick comes through at three, now there's going to be some quarterback sitting there. And Minnesota's going to think about it. Do I go up and get this guy? Denver. Um, Denver, the Giants, maybe I go up a couple of picks to get the guy that I really want if I have a special feeling on them. Uh, if you have to pick, and I've been in that situation before. Hey, we really don't want to pick. We hope the phone rings and we'll be willing to go down. But if we do have to pick, Joe Alt, uh, I coached his dad in Kansas City. His dad actually was a friend of mine growing up in the Twin Cities area. When I was in college, John Alt was a wow. fantastic athlete. Um, yep. in high school and you're talking about dedicated hard work passing on those family values we talked about Marvin Harrison learning from his dad Joe definitely learned from John and he's going to be a he's going to be a solid starter for years but I, I'm like Rodney if I had a chance to go down and pick up a little bit more uh, I probably would because I was I was looking for that special player in Marvin Harrison now he's not there yeah. Who, who do you think that team is that's the most quarterback hungry and the most willing to come up? Is it Denver and Sean Payton, or do you think it's another team? Minnesota. You think I, Minnesota? Could see, I could see Minnesota, yep. I really could. Um, I, I talked to Kevin O'Connell quite a bit. I'm actually going to see him this weekend, uh, and he was devastated, you know, losing Kirk Cousins. And a lot of the players, uh, J Justin Jefferson is devastated. So mm -hmm. <laughs> those guys want a quarterback. And there you go. Uh, if, if you have a chance to get a special one, and that's what it comes down to. Do you think these guys are special? If they are, go up and get them. Now, I have a guy that I kind of think is special. We're going to wait a little bit. It's not quite time for him yet, but we'll see what happens in the rest of this draft. I like it. That's a little teaser. The Chargers, Rodney, a team that picked you. Now you pick for the Chargers. Absolutely. And Harbaugh, you know, he wants to run the ball. He's going to push Justin Herbert. He's going to challenge him. But I'm taking um, tight end Brock Bowers from the University of Georgia. I live in Atlanta. I got a chance to watch a lot of UGA football. And this kid is just flat out. Can't nobody stop him. I mean, you can line him up out wide. He can go against corners, safeties, nickelbacks. He is big. He's, he's a lot faster than what you think. And he's a solid blocker. But this is a guy that's going to be a difference maker. And you think about Kansas City, the impact that Travis Kelsey had on all defenses. I mean, he's a major reason why they continue to win championships. Now you flip it. You you put Steve Spagnola in a situation where he has to worry about defending the tight end. And really, you, you think about losing um, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Austin Eckler. That's a lot of production that Darryl you lose. Everett. Yeah. Ab absolutely yeah. but you get this tight end man he is a difference maker and there's no way i'm passing up on this guy wow okay already a little shifting in the board of how we might have it let's get to the giants at pick six tony where are you leaning with new york well i was really thinking you know one of those receivers would slide down i'm thinking the quarterbacks are going to go one two three maybe even one two three four so i'm right. looking at maybe the fourth or fifth quarterback and I've got a good receiver like Malik Neighbors or Adunze. But now, Drake May's falling down there, okay, to number six. And I need that quarterback solidified. Uh, I think I'm going that direction just the way this draft is. Coach, you just falling. paid Daniel Jones four-year, $160 million. You just gave him that. Now you're going to draft a quarterback in the top five? Are you top five or six? Are you kidding me? 
I, I'm going to take that quarterback because I don't know if Daniel Jones is going to stay healthy enough. He hasn't won enough games for us. And uh, I, I think it's time for that young quarterback. I just I don't understand why pay him the type of money they pay him if they're unsure about their quarterback situation. And not even six, seven, eight months later, you go draft another quarterback. That's tough. I'm probably getting fired, but I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going to get that quarterback and make sure I've got him. Coach, what, what's the what's the right philosophy with that position? If you're pretty sure you have a guy, but you're you know not quite positive right now, what do you feel like? Is it smart to just start stacking them, draft another one, and just build that roster of quarterbacks? Or what's the right move if you're in between? Zach, you have to have a quarterback, and if you're in between, if you're not sure, then you don't have one. That's so right. uh, you, you got to go get him. Now, I, I love Green Bay, the way they've done it uh, over the last 40 years. Brett Favre came up there. He got uh, you know, to sit a little while. He learned. Okay. They, when they still had Favre going, they drafted Aaron Rodgers, but they knew Favre was at the tail end. They draft Rodgers. He sits and learns, becomes an all-pro Hall of Fame guy. At the end of his tenure, okay, they draft Jordan Love. And everybody, kind of like what Rodney said, hey, we've got a court. Why are we taking Jordan Love? Well, they're going to be in good shape for the next 10 years down the road. So I think you want to have that quarterback in place. And if you have any doubt at all, then you don't have your quarterback in place. Yeah, and I have a lot of, and I have a lot of doubt with these quarterbacks that you're talking about for the Giants. Yeah. But if I'm the Giants, I'm getting a difference maker, either on the offensive line, one of these really good tackles, or I'm getting a doomsday who you talked yeah. about. I mean, the kid is dynamic. You know, you throw the ball up, he can go deep. And that's what they need. They, they drafted Jalen Hyatt last year. He's a speedster from University of Tennessee, but he didn't quite get it done. They need, they need a home run hitter. And this young man is a home run hitter. He is. And, and originally, that was my thought. If the, those quarterbacks are gone, I'm getting that big play wide receiver and let him help Daniel Jones. Um, so we'll see what they do. But this, this would be, if, if, if May is there, I'd have to think about it. Okay. See, I Coach, you, wait, wait, wait. Is. Coach just fell in love with his personality. I did. You watch the tape. What about <laughs> those out routes that he missed by like five yards? Like, you still got to watch yeah. the tape. Yeah. I love the yeah. kid. You no, know, amen. Man. Amen. All right. I like it. So I think this is one of those picks where you just got to read the board. So I was thinking the Titans would be in love with Joe Alt. That was the original pick I had. Now you have quarterback go right before him. I think they now would turn receiver and go Malik Neighbors. No matter what, they got to help that young quarterback, right? You want to protect him. It's kind of a similar type thing you're talking about. You either protect them or you give them something on the outside they can win uh, and win often. And I'm going to go with Tennessee. Let's go Neighbors. And sometimes, Jack, that's not bad. I've been in that situation as a coach in the draft room, and your heart gets broken. The guy you have in mind goes right before you pick, and you're like, oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, we got to just take the next best player on the board, and it ends up being a, a, you know, the best thing that ever happened to you. So that could be the case for the Titans. That's it. And if you can get one of those difference making receivers, it's worth it that high. You know, I think when, when the Bengals had the pick between are they going to take Jamar Chase? Are they going to take one of those left tackles that could be around forever and change the franchise? If they're good enough, it's worth it, in my opinion, to go get a weapon at that level. And I think I think neighbors can be can be that level. Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, neighbors, Tennessee will have some heat. They, they will have some heat. And they were look good. But I agree with you, Jack. That that is the philosophy. If I, I think if I was picking in the top ten uh now, I'd be looking for difference makers, as Rodney said. Quarterback, big play receiver, big time pass rusher. I'm looking for that guy who can change the game. Yep, I'm with you. All right, Rodney's back up. Atlanta Falcons at pick number eight. You know this franchise well, hi Rod. Oh, I love the Atlanta Falcons and what they've done. I think hiring Raheem Morris was a was just an absolute home run. He's going to bring a lot of energy. He's going to um, hold that defense accountable, but he needs a pass rusher. And I think getting a guy on the edge, the young man from UCLA, I really like him. Um, I hope I don't blow his name, Leia too, <laughs> <La Tu. laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the kid from UCLA, he's 6'5", 260. Um, just a, a extremely, just an energetic guy, um, plays extremely hard, and that's what Atlanta needs. You saw Jesse Bates and the impact that he had at the safety position for Atlanta. He became a leader in all pro safety. 
they need some help up front. Jerry Great, um, Grady Jarrett can still play at a high level, but they need that pass rush. That's the one thing that they're missing. But I would love to take that kid at um, number eight if I'm Atlanta. Mm. Now, Rodney did that, and I'm Matt Eberflus with the Bears, and my heart just got broken because I'm saying – in my defense, I need to pass rusher. Latou was the guy I had my eye on. I thought he was going to fall right to me. It'd be perfect. Now my heart is broken. <laughs> and I got to say, well, let me take the next best guy on the board, and I'm going to take the receiver from Washington, the Dunze. Uh, and it's probably going to turn out great for me, but I'll go out there and have my press conference and say, yeah, Dunze was the guy we wanted all along. He was our guy, knowing that my heart was broken. I wanted that pass rusher, but Rodney snuck in on me. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's honestly crazy when you do this mock draft, you realize how you can fall in love with somebody for your team and for this reason and that reason. You think that they're going to do something else before you, and then they just don't. And now you got to adjust and go on the fly. I, this is another one of those situations for me. I like the Jets to get at pick number 10, somebody to help Aaron just have a win option on the outside. You know, I think they, they have enough, but I'd, I'd like to see them have another weapon or two. I like Bowers. I liked one of the receivers. Now those are out of the picture. With Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith, I would just be concerned that one of those two guys is not going to make it through the year. You know, uh, maybe both of those guys at some point is going to be out for a period of time. So, I would go young. I'd get another tackle. We saw how bad their offensive line was last year. I'll yes. go with this Fuaga out of uh, Oregon State with the Beavers, mm -hmm. with Joe Alt being off the table. Let's, let's get him another tackle and give Aaron a second to throw this thing. Hey, Jack, I love that pick, and I was saying the same thing. As much as you want to have somebody on the opposite side of um, um, the young wide receiver they have, that he needs protection. What was it, the first quarter, the first series, Aaron Rodgers dropped back and got and, and hurt himself? Um, but there's a lot of really outstanding tackles, and I think tackle is the perfect position because you think about Tyron. Tyron, every year he's hurt. He's going to miss five, six, seven, eight games. I mean, we talk about it all the time. When he's in there, he's a stud. You know, he's an all-pro all player, but he's not in there very often. There's enough tackles to get some young tackles and, and really get that depth. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like with, you know, with Aaron saying now that he's been rejuvenated and wants to play more years, that could be one of those guys that could help him not only this year, but for the next couple of years, protected Aaron. How about with the Minnesota Vikings coach at pick number 11, the final pick of our mock draft here? All right. Well, I was calling everybody up there in the top two or three. I wanted to go up and get that quarterback because I, I need to replace uh, Kirk Cousins, and it didn't happen. So I've got two choices now. Do I overdraft the quarterback that I like? Or do I take, as Rodney would say, the next best player? The other thing I need is pass rushers. Dallas Turner from Alabama is available. Uh, Jared Verse, a power guy from Florida State. They could help me. I know I need that quarterback. I think I'm going to stay and take Dallas Turner. And then I'm going to do everything I can to move up a little bit in the second round uh, and take Michael Penix and, and hope Ooh. I get him. And Ooh. it's a little too high for Penix right now because I don't think that's where he's rated – but I personally love this kid. Uh, I followed the Pac-10 or Pac-12, you know, since my son played there. Penix nice. is from right here in Tampa. I know his history. I know how hard he works. I know the type of leader he's been. And I've seen him in the big games really do it. So uh, he's, he's my sleeper. He's the guy that I, I want. Where do I have to get him? Somewhere in that second round, probably. Mm, I like that pick. I like the pick, and then I like the follow-up for the quarterback. I like the way you did that there. Who, who the heck does Denver wind up with the quarterback? You know Sean Payton's going to do something. Where, where does he me. go? <laughs> Sean <laughs> <laughs> no, Payton, they're calling people to move up. They're trying to get <laughs> up a little higher and uh, somehow package enough to get Drake, May I don't know, J.J. McCarthy, uh, somebody. But Sean's got his eye on somebody, and uh, they're, they're going to come out of this draft with a quarterback. I agree with you. All right, let's move it on to a little fill-in-the-blank section. I got two of them for you. The best late-round steal of the 2024 NFL draft will be. Rod, you want to take this one first? I, I don't know the because I, I don't know all the players, but one guy that I'm really paying close attention to and I got my eye on is Tavondre Sweat. Big guy, defensive tackle, interior guy. Um, the one thing that – you worry about is his weight, his concern. But if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, this is a guy 
that I can bring in right away, put into the interior of defense, and he could be a difference maker in the run game. They need that big physical presence. And um, to Vondre Sweat, I got my eye closely on him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about late round or where it's going to be, but uh, we're going to talk about a lot of quarterbacks in this draft and a bunch of guys high. The quarterback that I really love, and again, there's a little hometown bias in there, Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix has a chance to be special. He's a hard worker. He's a strong leader. He's a guy that his teammates love, and he's athletic. Um, I, I just think he's going to do something. He gets with a good quarterback coach and a good system. Uh, I'd keep my eyes on him. I like that pick. All right. I I'm looking at Kalen Bullock. I think you guys will like him the more you watch him play. Safety from USC. He's 20 years old. He reminds me a lot of a young Kyle Hamilton when he when he was, you know, about that age. He's long. He's 6'3", weighs about 200 pounds. He'll come down and hit you. But every time the football's in the air, he thinks he's playing wide receiver. You know, he's one of those that – he thinks he's better than the guy who's, you know, playing offensive football. And he ran faster time than Kyle Hamilton by, you know, a pretty substantial margin. He's a 4-4 guy. He'll hit you. And But when we did USC's game, they just kept bringing him up. And you know how when the defensive coordinators and DB coaches keep bringing a guy up, it's for good reason. And here he is in the draft. So you got that advantage over us. You, you've seen a lot of these <laughs> yeah. guys. You had these sleepers from a broadcast. And I, I appreciate that. Hey, hanging out with you guys, Coach, I need all the help I can get. I need all the help I can get. Ron, I think you'll end up liking him. I think you'll end up liking his game. You're a big fan of Kyle Hamilton. Big fan of Kyle Hamilton. I like those big safeties that can play different positions. And, you know, you look at a guy like Duran James, new defensive coordinator. I know he's excited. Get him closer to the line of scrimmage yep. so he can do his thing. I like it. How about the quarterback who will have the best rookie season? We've talked to these quarterbacks. Coach, who do you think has the best rookie season when it's all said and done? Wow, that, that's a, a, a tough one. But I think, you know, Caleb Williams has the chance to do that. They've got some pieces around him. Um, normally, when you're the number one pick, you're going to a bad football team. Uh, he's not going to a bad team. And now you add Keenan Allen and, and uh, you know, uh, Gerald Everett. Um, so there, there's a chance for... Uh, him to have some weapons around him and be in a good situation. So I, I, I like that. Chicago's uh, tough. And, you know, they got a good offensive line. They're building yeah. a young defense. And, you know, the prospects are good for the for And the they Chicago got the, the running back, right, uh, from Philly. Yeah, yeah they, the, run, they the, run the football. All the pressure won't be on him to do it all by himself on a very bad football team. He, he's on a team. This team beat the Green Bay Packers last year and should have beaten them twice. So um, there, there's some talent around him, and I, I think he has a chance. All right, Ron, how about for you? What was the question again? The quarterback that will have the best rookie season. Oh, I mean, it has to be Caleb. I mean, he's the number one pick overall. I mean, um, these other guys, they might sit. You don't know if they're going to play right away, but we know that Caleb's going to play right away, and I think the Bears have done a solid job of trying to bring in some offensive line, bring in some talent, some veteran experience. Keenan Allen is a pro. We've interviewed him. We spent time with him. And you know he's going to be in that young quarterback's ear. They're both from, you know, the California area. You know, he that, that's just the leadership that he brings. And I'm, I'm just really excited to see uh, what happens with him. But I think Caleb, with the talent level that he has, he's definitely going to have the best year. I like it. I, I'm going to take Jaden Daniels. Uh, just watching him play at LSU, 40 touchdowns, only four interceptions. I think you like that. You know, anytime a guy transitions to the NFL, does he take care of the ball, I think is one of the first things that you look at. And then Brian Kelly talked about when he was at Arizona State, watching his tape and going, why doesn't he run when it's open? You know, because sometimes he just wouldn't run. He goes, I can tell he's fast. There'll be moments in the game you can tell he's fast. Why are they not using him in the design run game? Also, and then he goes out at LSU, runs for 2,000 yards, 21 touchdowns in a couple of years. So he has this ability to do both. And to me, that's become a prerequisite if you want to be a great quarterback, especially a great young quarterback prospect in the NFL. I think he'll have a chance to catch lightning in a bottle if he ends up in the right spot. And I just worry about that's the key. Where does he go and where is the right spot? Is it to Washington? Is it to New England? Is it to somebody who moves up to get him? Uh, we'll, we'll see where he ends up going. I could see him in Denver. I could, I could just see him <laughs> in Denver. I could see that being the one Sean Payton ends up loving. 
How, how about for you guys in your NFL draft memories? What's When you think back on your draft day, your draft experience, what's your favorite memory when you think back? Well, I, I can just, I can go for mine. I was 145th pick and I can remember in 1994, we're at home, we're chilling, we're kind of on the couch. And at the fourth and fifth round, not many people are watching the fourth and fifth round. So I'm falling asleep. And then I get a phone call and Bobby Bether, may you rest in peace. He gave me a call. He said, Rodney, we just drafted you in the fifth round. This is Bobby Bether from the San Diego Chargers. You're a Charger. And I was like, are you playing? Are you serious with me? And he's like, yeah, I'm serious. So I looked at the TV and I saw my name go across the ticket. But this is the kicker. We didn't have a lot of money, right? So my mom applied for like a $5,000 credit card back then. And she maximized the credit card to buy big screen TVs for us to watch the draft, a refrigerator, stove, micro, you know, those type of things. And we were $5,000 in debt. So I had to get drafted or we were going to be in big trouble. <laughs> oh, man. I'll take you back to 1977, Rodney. The draft wasn't even on TV then. It was all in one day, um, and you were sitting, waiting for that phone call. Uh, my roommate, a young man named Mike Jones, he was a receiver. He got drafted by the Giants in the fifth round. It was late afternoon, and uh, we're celebrating, you know, with him and just excited and pumped up and got a bunch of guys over, and we're just sitting, hanging out. Now it's 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. The phone hasn't rung again, so it's about 11 o'clock. And I, I called the Associated Press in Minneapolis. I said, hey, uh, you know, what round is the draft in? And the guy said, the draft's been over for two hours. I said, it can't be over. My phone didn't ring. <laughs> so I walked out, Rodney. I'm, I'm walking around campus just praying, Lord, what happened? How could you let this happen to me? How do I not get drafted? What are you doing to me? And I, I was so down. And I thought I was going to go to Canada, play for the Montreal Alouettes. And I, I just prayed about it. And the next morning, my phone rang, and it was Coach Noel and the Steelers. Hey, we don't want you as a quarterback, but we got room for you if you want to sign. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow. wow. Great story. What a great story. Was that how the draft was back then? It was Yes. Dude, there was, if your phone didn't ring, you didn't know what was happening. It wasn't covered on the radio. <laughs> it wasn't on TV. And you just all you had was that phone. And no cell phones back then. No cell phones. Nope. No, it, it's unreal now how it's become this bigger than life made for TV event. I mean, like people, it's it's appointment viewing. People can't wait for draft day now. You yeah, know, it's, it, it, you know, it's so exciting, man, because you get a chance to see these young men that have worked so hard and sacrificed so much, and you know their families, and just to see the, you know, just the excitement and just the future, the opportunity. And that's what you want, man. You want an opportunity to go out here and show what you can do. And I, I tell young men all the time, take advantage every single day of the opportunity because it can be gone just like that. You know, National Football League is real. But the thing people really need to remember, and Rodney is a great story in that, and, and I guess so am I, the draft is great, and but the draft isn't the end result, and that's not what you prepare. You can't say, oh, I got drafted in the first round, so that's fantastic, or I only got drafted in the fifth round, so I'm not going to make it. Uh, no, the draft is a starting point, and you then control what you're going to do from there. We, we had so many guys over the course of my career that came in. Uh, Gary Brackett was not drafted, ended up being our defensive captain, the leader of the team. Um, you know, th that happens over and over and over again. That guy's drafted in the first round, and he isn't what you thought he was. Uh, somebody like Rodney Harrison, we didn't know we are getting this. We didn't know we are getting a Hall of Fame-type player. Um, it's just a starting point. That, that's for darn sure. I want to get you guys out of here on this. So, so Bill Belichick back in the news. Seems like Bill Belichick's always in the news, right? And, and the report was that essentially Robert Kraft was saying, you know, maybe Belichick's not your guy to Arthur Blank. How did you guys hear that news? Was that shocking to you? Do you feel like it's real or fake? And what's the future for Bill Belichick? Is he on TV from now on, or do you think he eventually will be a head coach again? Well, for me, I, I didn't read the story, um, and I will take some time out today to read it. But at the end of the day, man, when you work somebody, whether it's a relationship or you've worked with somebody over 20 years, there's going to be a lot of things that you guys celebrate. But there's going to be also some th things that you guys have gone through. I think overall, there's a mutual respect. 
Um, I think to be able to work with somebody that long and accomplish as many things, you're going to have some headbutt. You're going to have some disagreements. It's all part of it. But Coach Belichick, at the end of the day, no matter what Kraft said or anybody said about him, he's going to be fine. He's going to do some TV, maybe take a year off. He Maybe he enjoys TV and he'll do it the next 10 to 5 or 10 years. Or maybe he goes back into coaching. But I do believe that he takes this year out. He kind of reinvents himself, gets some rest, come back, and um, eventually gets one of these job openings. I, I too think he'll be back, and I think he'll do a tremendous job for somebody who thinks their team is close to being there. He'll take them to the next level. And I, I looked at the story, and I thought back to myself. You know, when I left the the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I got fired. Okay, Jim Irsay, if he'd have called the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and said, "Tell me about Tony Dungy," they would have said some good things. They wouldn't have. Bring, oh, this is the guy you need to have. Uh, so Jim Irsay had to do his own research and figure out if he wanted me. And to me, that's what I would have told Arthur Blank. Do your research. And if this is the guy you want and this is the guy you think can take you to the Super Bowl, hire him. Don't worry about what everybody else said. A lot of people said I wouldn't succeed. I wasn't tough enough. I wasn't hard enough. I, you know, They could have had a thousand things to say about me. But Jim Irsay said, you know what? I did my investigation. I don't care what anybody else says. This is the guy I want. And to me, that's what you have to do as an owner. I love it. Well, fellas, it is always great to see you. You just know that. As the draft approaches, I just like we, hanging out with my guys. We need to do this more often. We really well, do, man. I well, miss you guys. Well, we're going to do this after the draft and just see how wrong you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I look forward to it as always. The FNIA podcast with Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison. We'll see you after the draft. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.